Welcome to our lecture online. The latter problem is a very typical problem when we deal with friction. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do four different examples. On the first example, we have friction at the bottom, but no friction against the side. On the second example, we have the ladder resting on a corner, friction at the bottom, no friction on the corner. The third example will have friction here and friction on the side. And the fourth example will have also friction here and friction on the corner here. So the first, the second, and the fourth are the same in structure, but here we have no friction and there we have friction. And so you can see how that kind of problem develops through the various examples. So here we're starting with example one, where we have a ladder that is 10.4 feet long. So we have the ladder four feet away from the wall and touching the wall 9.6 feet above the ground. Notice that since there's no friction there, there can only be a perpendicular component to the surface. That's called the normal at that point. We'll call that point B. And here we'll call the point A where there is friction. So therefore we have a perpendicular component and we have a horizontal component. Notice that the only two components in the vertical direction are the weight of the ladder, which acts at the center mass, which should be the middle of the ladder to make things simple. And we have the normal force pushing back here. These forces need to be equal in magnitude and of course opposite in direction. And the only two forces acting in the horizontal direction are these two. So therefore those two must be equal in magnitude and obviously opposite in direction. The purpose of this particular example is to find the friction required here to keep the ladder from sliding. So we're trying to find the coefficient of friction down here at the bottom. To do that, we're going to try to figure out the normal force here by summing up the moments about point A. So we'll start off with finding the moments about point A to determine the normal force at B. So this is equal to Notice when you pick the point, the pivot point right here, you eliminate these two forces and you only have to worry about these two forces right there. This is a known force, so we can calculate the unknown force N sub B. And you know that the moments are going to equal zero if everything stays static. And so this is equal to mg. Now mg causes a clockwise moment, which means a negative mg times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, which would be half the distance of four feet or two feet, so mg times two. And then plus, because the normal at B causes a kind of clockwise moment, so that's plus n sub B, and the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point would be the 9.6 feet. From this, we can calculate n sub B. n sub B, then becomes equal to, well, when we move this across, we have mg times 2 divided by the coefficient 9.6. And, well, we're not given mg, so we're simply going to do it in terms of mg. So 2 divided by 9.6 equals 0 0.208. So n sub b is equal to 0 0.208 times mg. Okay, from that, we can now go to the sum of all the forces in the x direction because the friction force should equal nb. And of course, the friction force is equal to, well, let's see, yes. Well, we can also say that the friction force at A is equal to the normal force at A times mu. And of course, the normal force of A is mg. So we can say that the friction force at A is equal to mg times mu. So we'll go ahead and keep that in case we need it. Now we're going to sum up all the forces in the, well, in the x direction. So let's try that. So sum all the forces in the x direction. They should add up to zero. And of course we have the friction force at A pushing to the right. So that's force friction at A minus the normal force at B. And that means that zero is equal to the friction force at A, which is mg times mu, minus the normal force at B, which is 0 0.208 mg, 0 0.208 mg, which means if we solve this from mu, we turn the equation around, we get mg mu is equal to mg times 0 0.208. So from this, we can conclude 
that the coefficient of friction must be 0 0.208. And that's the coefficient of friction required to keep the ladder from sliding when it's 4 feet from the wall at the bottom and touching the wall 9.6 feet above the ground. And that's how that's done.